Well, it's that Friday time, folks. Yes, not only is it time for another brand new video on every Friday, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, please, but it's E3 time, which means I'm taking a break from completing a game and focusing on what everybody is talking about, E3. I myself have been at E3 all week, and while I don't think this is the biggest and best one yet, it's certainly one of the more interesting ones. So, some things for me real quick. I really feel that this year, Nintendo and Sony brought fewer titles, but focused heavily on quality. Whereas Microsoft really honed in on bringing in newer studios and supporting them to create original titles. And at the end of the day, there is a lot of good stuff here. So, enough of my bloated talking. Here are my top 10 games of E3 2018. And to go along with this, some little rules. My top 10 E3 games list only exists with games that were playable on the show floor and only games that I actually physically got to play. That means no Death Stranding or any other game that I couldn't get my hands on due to not having appointments. See, at E3, some of the bigger games are by appointment only. And not every company out there gives a crap about a guy who completes a game a week now too with almost a million subscribers, which by the way, holy crap, thank you guys so much. I cannot wait to celebrate that with you guys. Sorry, sorry about that. I also want to add no ports of any other games to other consoles. So, no Fortnite for Switch or Dragon Ball Fighter Z for Switch. Either way, let's begin. Number 10. I hate to dive into the whole analogy that the internet has dubbed when comparing a game to be the blank of Dark Souls, so I won't. Tunic is a fun little 3D Zelda-esque adventure game in which the main character has a dodge roll. See, I can describe games while comparing them to other games without saying they're Dark Souls, ah damn it. Anyways, I got to play this game immediately after the Microsoft press conference, and I fell in love with this little fox guy. This cute little character within minutes appears in a 3D world that clearly is out to get them. I found a stick. I fought monsters with that same stick. It was a good stick. Then I found a sword, and I killed monsters with that sword. It was a good sword. While admittedly, the demo took a little bit longer than I would have liked to have gotten into the game, Tunic is a fine example of a small indie game with ambitious dreams. And even though it does draw a lot from Zelda as its clear inspiration, the game immediately pushes you towards danger and wonder. And overall, I'm excited to see more of this game. Number nine. I absolutely loved Ori and the Blind Forest. One of the few games that, at the time when it came out, I wished I made a video on it. Do you guys want to see a video on it? Let me know in the comments down below. Seriously, I want to know. Especially because I got to play Ori and the Will of the Wisps. And let me tell you, the game is freaking B E A beautiful. Within seconds, it's easy to pick up and play. The art design drew me in faster than a 7 Eleven doing a special on Diet Peach Snapple. And it feels like the first game, familiar and exciting while focusing on new. I wish I had gotten to the portion of the demo, if there was a portion, where I got to interact with the owl from the trailer because that darn owl just wants a hug. Now I want to hug an owl. I want to take care of an owl, you guys. Yo, on the real though, I can barely take care of myself, let alone an owl, so don't, don't give me an owl. Number eight. You all know that Super Meat Boy holds a very clear and special place in my heart. Edmund and Tommy, the creators of the franchise back in the day, personally challenged me to complete that game, and lo and behold, I did. So imagine my reaction when I heard about Super Meat Boy Forever. I was pumped, I was excited, I was, ah, sh it's an auto runner. Well, at least that was my feeling initially. But after the Microsoft press conference, once again, I got to meet up with Tommy and I played Super Meat Boy Forever for about 30 minutes. And I have to say, I love that it's an auto runner because while Meat Boy is constantly running from left to right, there are a lot, and boy, do I mean a lot of moving mechanics to this game. Holding down makes Meat Boy slide with his fists up and tapping the jump button twice gives Meat Boy the ability to jump and super punch his way across the level. And along with those moving things are a lot of saws. Lots and lots of saws. 
The most impressive part is that while I was playing the game on the hardest difficulty, Tommy revealed to me that Super Meat Boy Forever will have over 7,400 levels that are randomly generated based on the difficulty you are playing on. Holy crap! Somebody get me a mint julep. It's gonna be a hot one to complete. Number seven. I don't think I've ever said this out loud before, but I actually really, really, really like Soul Calibur. Soul Calibur 2 and 4 are my favorite ones, and I've been wanting to jump back in for quite some time. Well, I got to play a fair amount of Soul Calibur 6, and it's got speed and polish. There's a new mechanic in the game where it's essentially a slowdown version of rock, paper, scissors, which usually lead to some big damage. It's got a slew of returning characters, and since I love guest characters, Gerald from Witcher 3 is in the game, and that's tight. And by far, it's the best looking Soul Calibur game. And I really hope it brings in a lot of new fans. I also really hope there are a lot more guest characters. I'd like to see maybe a Persona 5 character, or a Fire Emblem character, something real off the wall, you know? Number six. So last year, Dragon Ball Fighter Z blew me away. Bandai Namco, I feel, is one of the few companies where in recent years, they've just been having as much fun as they can, and it shows in the games they produce. And while still a year later, I have no idea on what's going on or who's who in anything DBZ related, at the Microsoft conference, we were once again graced with yet another anime fighting game. And when I say anime, I mean literal anime. Naruto, Dragon Ball, and One Piece were all represented here, with a nod to more showing up, such as Death Note. Now this is more of the traditional anime arena fighter as opposed to a 2D fighting game. And let me just say, it's pure madness. It's fun as hell, but it's pure madness. I played it for quite some time and I had no idea what was going on. I had fun, but no clue. And while I am not the most familiar with anime or manga, manga, whatever, I would be hype as hell if they featured One Punch Man. Holy God, let's go. I really want this. Number five. One of Sony's few titles that they did show off was Marvel's Spider-Man. Spider-Man is their big game of show for this E3. They handed out newspapers from various newspaper stands that were spread out throughout the show floor. They had a pretty cool set piece. The game comes out in September. And the game itself? Oh, the game is good. It's real good. Admittedly, and maybe I'm becoming the new joke of a gamer that doesn't know how to follow a stupid tutorial, I had a hard time getting started with swinging around. But once I figured it out, it felt second nature. Exploring this world is gorgeous. It does remind me a lot of Spider-Man 2. But there is one small thing that did kind of bum me out. The combat reminds me a lot of the Arkham series. Now that's not a bad thing, but it feels a bit too familiar. I guess you can't really do that much to change up cinematic combat like that. Luckily, there's tons of on-the-fly mechanics in the game to keep combat very exciting and fresh depending on what's going on around you. Grabbing certain items and throwing it at the enemies, leaping to the nearest point and then jumping back down. There's a lot of variety in the combat. I don't want to seem like it sounds stale. Nevertheless, the game looks pretty ready. I'm pretty ready. Let's complete this game later this year, shall we? Number four. Mega Man, Mega Man, Mega Man, yes! Mega Man 11 was playable. I played a lot of Mega Man 11, and for all of you skeptics out there, as someone who considers themselves a massive fan of these games, Mega Man is in good hands. The new gear system is super impressive, introducing two brand new mechanics that, which honestly is the best part, are completely optional. The red gear has Mega Man favoring performance, giving him the ability to shoot faster and charge more powerful shots. The blue gear is a time manipulation system, slowing down time so you can maneuver things safely. Longtime fans of the series may not like this mechanic, but I truly adore it. Especially because when you are low on life, you can combine both gears in those big do or die moments and really overcome your obstacles. And when you toggle the double gear maneuver, you better hope you kill whatever is in your way because you will become too weak to carry on. I played two full levels of Mega Man 11, and while there are more frequent checkpoints scattered throughout each stage, these levels are meaty. They are not short. And while people will complain about the run animation cycle, or even the fact that the jump animations and the lane animations have start of and end frames, I think everyone's going to love Mega Man 11. Can you tell? I'm freaking excited. Woo! Let's go! 
number three. So if you've been following me on Instagram and Twitter or my Let's Play channel Super Beard Bros, you may have heard that I got to demo Kingdom Hearts 3 several weeks before E3. The embargo about what I saw back then was restricted to a couple of weeks ago, but then I got the chance to play the game again. I had to go back at E3 and make sure my opinions were real and not just some weird grandeur of morning nostalgia. Officially, after playing four hours of the Toy Story Kingdom from Kingdom Hearts 3, I can say with all my heart, Kingdom Hearts 3 is going to be sick. They made some subtle tweaks to combat with regards to real-time combos. Instead of just hitting X over and over and over again mindlessly, you can now build a combo meter you can chain together into other big moves. Moves. And these big moves are huge. Some of these moves come straight from the current Keyblade you are wielding. Others are big ass summons in the forms of Disneyland and Disney World rides. Aside from that, it really feels like Kingdom Hearts hasn't skipped a beat. It feels focused, combat feels wonderful, the presentation is phenomenal, and we have a release date. At this point, I am back on the Kingdom Hearts 3 train, especially since we got a returning visit to Pirates of the Caribbean Kingdom. Hell yeah! Quick side note, as a big Disney fanatic, I got to take a picture with Mickey in his Kingdom Hearts outfit, which by the way, is super rare. That's not a thing you can just really get to do at any of the parks in the US. Also, at the Kingdom Hearts 3 event I went to, Tetsuya Nomura came out and said that he and the team watch a lot of YouTube videos to help inspire and shape the game. And while he said this, he was looking around towards me. And let me tell you, Nomura, if you are listening, why are you listening to me? I am just a dude who plays games. Also, when I saw him, just for the record, I saw him wearing a Stark Industry t-shirt. Calling it now, Marvel Kingdom. Let's go, MCU. Number two. You ever have one of those years for E3 when you say to yourself, this is the year. This is the year that for some weird reason, the company that I really admire will release a game that I was begging for. Well, for me, this was that year with the game being Resident Evil 2 Remake. Holy crap, I didn't just get to play this game for 20 minutes. I got to play the game for a few hours and let me tell you, oh my God, it's good. Made in the same engine as Resident Evil 7, but based off the combat mechanics of Resident Evil 4, Resident Evil 2 once again is going back to basics with focusing on horror. And that's very evident with how they've dealt with zombies. While the RE4 combat is awesome, it will make you realize that these zombies, they don't give a crap about you or your bullets. They're slow, but they're strong. Hell, even Capcom's booth this year was modeled off of the Raccoon City Police Department. And before I even got to play the game, I had to walk down a maze filled with acting zombie actors. And yeah, that was all I needed to get my blood pumping. One of the more fascinating things about RE2 is how they use light, or rather, lack of light. Everything is very dark and hard to see, which is brilliant because it lets the zombies truly control what's going on in the game around you. I think my favorite part is how young Leon and Claire are. They look like babies compared to the original game, which I believe this way more. I cannot wait to recomplete this new version of RE2. It feels like a brand new game. Number one. For like the fourth year in a row, while Nintendo usually steals several spots on my top 10 lists, they took number one again with the brand new Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. I know this seems weird to take on at first because of the fact that I said at the very beginning of this video that no ports from previous consoles would make it onto this list, but here's the thing. For as much crap as the internet is giving Smash Ultimate for being a port with more features, it does not feel like a port in my opinion, it is way more. They essentially brought wave dashing from Melee into this game. They added several new small mechanics to one-on-one -on -one play. The roster is literally massive. Every single character from Smash Brothers history is in this game. And I guarantee you that all of them got several tweaks. We also got the brand new characters of the Inklings, and the fan meme legend is now somehow real. Ridley from Metroid is in Smash. And the craziest part about all this content being announced is the game has a release date for December 7th of this year, which means, much like last Smash for Wii U and 3DS announcements, there's a good chance we're going to get another Smash Direct with a lot more content discussing single-player modes and bonus modes. This truly is the biggest Smash 
for this game of all time that expands across all the generations of the franchise. And more importantly, it plays faster and different than the previous games. And wouldn't you know it? I kept coming back and playing this game over and over and over again. Yes, I sat in lines, but I don't care. It was worth it. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is my big title for E3 2018. And while a few of you out there would have called it knowing me and my channel and what I do, eh, I don't really care. I like what I like. I love what I love. I don't have to argue with people about who I am and what I do. So. Those were my top 10 E3 games of 2018. Let me know why I am wrong down in the comments below. And once again, I know I say this each and every year, but as E3 becomes more of a public event, I just want to say thank you to all the fans out there that came up to me, asked for a selfie, told me a Beard Bros Weem, or simply said hello. You guys keep the fire in me burning bigger and brighter each and every year. So take care, you guys, and I'll see you all soon.